Hello there and welcome back for another episode of the Bootleg Pit Stop. Let's just get right into the video. <laughs> Anyways, hello, hello, and welcome. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe, thumbs up, all that good stuff, and let's talk drag, darling. This week's episode was really good. We're really starting to get into the meat, into the juiciness of the episodes, and plus, you know, we're starting to thin out some of these queens. It's a lot, a lot of queens, and we're starting to really see what personalities people are bringing. We're, we're starting to pick up who keeps repeating looks, who we we're starting to get a clearer idea of who's actually going to make it to the top four if not win so this week was um a, a cute little recreation and a past season the girls put on a show called the daytona wind and it, it was one of the more popular acting challenges that i think has been on drag race but it was a little different this time so the original production that they put on was a, a drama they they made a parody of like a drama that you would see on tv and this time they made a parody of a sitcom so it was it was it was cute you know it paid homage to something that uh it paid it paid homage to something that a lot of Drag Race fans love, but they changed it just enough to keep it spicy. You know, Rue always switching it up, you know? One of my favorite things about the challenge is that we got a lot of classic lines that the Drag Race girls have said over the years. So, so at the top of the episode, we still have this awkward moment lingering over from last week when Mistress and Malaysia were arguing. And there's this tension here and... Uh, it, <laughs> without getting too much into that because we got a lot to cover um i do like that mistress called malaysia out and was basically like baby you had all of this to say about me when i wasn't here and now i'm here and now you have nothing to say like let's talk like adult adults or, or leave it alone and that's what i was saying last week y'all if y'all watched last week y'all heard me say uh malaysia had a whole lot to say when mistress wasn't around, now cat got your tongue. So um, later on in episode, Malaysia tried to like smooth things over with mistress, and mistress is like, "Girl, I'm not bothered. Like, you you you're blowing this up way more than it needs to be." Our mistress was like, oh, "Okay, yeah, yeah, girl, that ain't no thing." Mistress is not bothered by Malaysia. Malaysia needs to calm. Girl, you need to calm down. But I think that. The competition is getting to her. I think she's letting her insecurity, her inner saboteur really get to her. Malaysia, baby, calm down. It, it, it ain't nobody worried about all that like that. So anyway, so the girls had to pick their roles. Because Aura won last week, she got to assign the roles. And she ended up giving herself, originally, the biggest role in the show. Now, of course, you want to go for the big role because if you get the big role and you do a good job, then baby, hello, better chance for you to win. But at the same time, know your place. If you know you're not a strong actress or actor, don't sabotage yourself because you, you, you're trying to be because you're trying to be great. You know what I'm saying? So she gave herself this part. The funny thing is, even though there's this tension between Mistress and Malaysia, they accidentally ended up having a lot of scene time together, which means they had to work together a lot, which I'm sure production was like, oh, this is great television. But I'm sure Malaysia and Mistress was like, damn, now how did I end up in a... How did I end up doing all these scenes and these lines exchange with this girl? But anyways, it made for great TV. So the girls start running their lines and Ara very quickly realizes she is in over our head. But let me tell you about Mistress. Now, Mistress has some ways. We've talked about her, how the Texas Queens are. But the way the girl knows how to play the game. So Aura starts to get a little bit shaky. She's kind of like, man, this is a lot of lines. I don't even know if I can pull this character off. And then Mistress swoops in and was like, girl, you know, you know, if you don't feel comfortable, I mean, you know, you could always give it to somebody else. I mean, you know, or, you know, just run the lines. Just see. Just see if another character fits you better. And then Aura just being completely um, uh, oblivious to the, the mind control that Mistress is pulling. I was like, oh, yeah, you know what you, well, maybe, maybe you could do it, Mistress. And Mistress was like, oh, oh, I didn't even think of that. Oh, me? Who, me? Girl, you know, you know exactly what you 
what's going on. So Mistress bamboozled the role that she wanted and that everybody wanted right out from Aura's nose. And they ended up switching roles. And I think that it, what, it, it was the better decision. Aura wasn't going to be able to carry that, carry that character. And that doesn't necessarily mean that Aura's not a great actress, actor, but that particular role, it just was not her. Cut to the girls are recording their scenes and this week they work with Rue Paul. Now it is one thing to try to shoot a scene with Michelle Visage, Carson Kressley, Ross Matthews, I guess the judge, the producers, but when RuPaul himself is in there directing you, girl, that's another layer of pressure that I don't, I don't know that I would be prepared for. So so anyway, so everybody kind of pretty much looks great. Most of the girls do pretty well. There was no one that was just like, ugh, yikes. But there's still so many girls that it was hard to get a whole lot of screen time. Some of the people, I don't even remember them being in there. Sasha, I don't remember. Uh, she was a blur. Lux was a blur. And then we had Anitra and Marsha, kind of their characters were very close together. They did good. And actually in the critiques, they got really high critiques and they kind of got critiqued as a pair um, inadvertently, kind of, sort of. But they both got good remarks. To me, I feel like Marsha, you could tell she's a Broadway girl. Marsha really elevated the scene. Anitra didn't do bad, but I feel like Marsha really heightened her up. And I think Anitra got lucky that she was with Marsha. Spice got a lot of direction. Um, but she took direction well. Aura got direction and she just wasn't, I don't know, but she wasn't catching the references. I don't know if she was nervous. I don't know, but she really, had, even though she didn't have the biggest role, um, she had a role that really could have stolen the show. And she just, even after she switched roles with Mistress, it still, it just didn't rise to the occasion. M Malaysia and Mistress, they did they did great. They they were funny. They were hitting the cues. They were giving me improv. They were giving me what needed to be gave. And then Lucy, fine. Selena, the energy was there, but I feel like, um, I, I don't know if, it, it was okay. Cut to, we go to the runways. This week's runway theme was Puffa Please, which I, I love RuPaul the, and the team. They always come up with good names for the runways, right? Let's let's take a look at some of these looks. Now, I feel like the my favorite runway look was Sasha Colby. To me, looks alone, I feel like she should have won, but because she didn't really have a strong role in the show, I feel like that's what kept her from winning uh, the, everything. So let's talk about some of these looks, darling. Okay, so Anitra, um, no, no. The silhouette is fine, but uh, the color's hideous. It looks very costume to me, I'm sorry. Aura, I didn't mind the look. I like the silhouette. I think I would have liked it to be a little bit more s cinched, but if she would have had a boob. Jax, um... I don't, I didn't hate it, but again, we needed a boob. Um, it wasn't the worst thing on the runway, but because Sasha also had like this bumblebee look. Now, if Sasha would have wore something different, I, I would have liked Jack's look more. And then plus Sasha went first. Oh, baby. Lucy, <sighs> um, it's not the worst, but... Now the body was right. The body saved this look, but it's give it is giving Donald Duck. If it was a Donald Duck elevation challenge, yeah, baby, you would have had it. Lux. I liked Lux's look. And I'm glad that Lux had a strong runway because we did just like Sasha, we didn't get a lot in you know what I'm saying, in, in the show. But Lux, the look I like the look. Um the pink on the chocolate skin is gonna win every time. Malaysia. Baby Doll Fox Brooks, Paris, France, New York. No, I'm just playing. I liked it. I don't think I liked it as much as the judges, but I think that because also I was annoyed with Malaysia. See, that's the thing about me. If you annoy me during the show, I judge your look so much harder. Not on purpose, but it's just like, 
oh, you got on my nerves, so you really got to impress me. Malaysia's getting on my nerves, so maybe if it was a different week, maybe I would have liked the look a lot more, but mm. And then we have Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Now, I liked Marsha's look. It was giving me camp, so she came out, she has like the freezer burn on her, uh, or not the freezer burn. <laughs> The frostbite all over her body. And I, and I, I like that element of comedy that she added to it. She's adding more and more makeup. She's taking the notes from the judges. I'm not mad. And she did great in the challenge. So uh, really nice runway. Um, it, would I have done something different with the boot? Maybe. But um, I'm not mad at the look. And I know that she doesn't have a boot. But because it's a puffer bra... Um, it didn't bother me too much. And Mistress, I loved Mistress's look, and Mistress won the challenge. I agree. I liked the look, and she she did the role justice. She acted really well, and she served on the runway. And with the puffer, you know these puffer jackets they add on weight. You know what I'm saying? And this is a big girl. She's a big girl, and I like that she designed her look in a way that um, really uh, ac accentuated her body rather than making her look three times as huge. And, you know, I like that she did the reverse. Normally, we think puffer jacket, we think wintertime, we think a winter coat, and she's made like this summer spring outfit she's showing a lot of skin but she's still giving puffer i like the color scheme and of course the makeup is always right we don't even got to talk about the makeup so congratulations mistress selena no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am and then she had hot cheetos and i, I just I and then spice i liked what spice was wearing I think that it was very cute. Is it terribly innovative? No, but it's very well executed. It's very on brand for her. And then on the runway, so when they were doing the critiques, Michelle and a couple of the judges, really I think Michelle went in on Spice doing the same runway walk. This little, <laughs> you know, she does the same thing all the time. And then so when they set, tell her that she's safe and she can go back, Spice does the walk again. She does a little just silence. And then RuPaul goes, cue the sniper. And I just, I thought that that was so funny. And Spice is like, I'm sorry, it's the last time, really. In the bottom, we have Aura Maiari and we have Jax in the bottom. And they lip sync to the sweetest pie with by Megan Thee Stallion and Dua Lipa. The lip sync was good. Now, was I gooped that Aura went from the top? She, Aura, y'all gotta remember, Aura won last week. She won last week and landed in the bottom. That is a hard, long fall from the, literally from the, baby, Cardi B said from the bottom to the top, make it hot, hot. She didn't say from the top to the bottom. <sighs> Y'all don't be listening. The lip sync was good. Jax won. Aura ended up going home. Do I feel like Jax won the lip sync? Sure. Yeah. But also, I was bored. Turned it into uh, RuPaul's next best cheerleader contest. Doing all these flips and these stunts and tricks. Every song doesn't need that. Now, see, uh, uh, see Jax has been in the bottom already. And I'm like... I've already seen the way you lip sync like this. I've already seen it. I'm bored. I want to see, are you doing all these flips and stuff because you don't know the words? Or what is going on? Aura, at the beginning of the number, she strips down and she has the little black pasties, the little heart pasties. And I'm like, girl, I don't know who you thought she was going to gag with these little heart pasties, but baby, nobody's gagging. And you did the reveal way too soon. You should have started your number and then... At the perfect time and then show the you did the reveal and then Jax did a cartwheel and baby you lost anyways we can't wait to see more from you congratulations uh to mistress on the win i think you i think it was deserved now, and i will say this now in untucked lucy was very shocked very shocked that she was in the bottom or uh safe safe Lucy was very shocked that she was safe. And I'm like, girl, 
girl. Like she talked the whole episode about I can't believe I can't believe I'm safe. And even after the episode aired, she got on Twitter and was like, "Well, I just can't, still can't believe that I was safe." Girl, if you don't like that. Shit. So anyway, so that's that on that. I can't wait to see what's going to come next. And uh, I'm just, I'm excited about this. See, this is a good season. Thank you guys so much for watching. I think that's about it. Are we done? We're good. Is that a wrap? We're done. Okay, bye.